Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Putty and welcome back for another edition of Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. We are here for the ninth annual edition of the premier tag team tournament in independent American wrestling today. This is the Sam Keith Classic 9. The only team we knew going into this show that would be on it is of course the Dynamite Express looking, uh, I think this is probably like their fourth or fifth entrance into the tournament. They've been here a lot. Um... But they've never won it. They are three-time uh, Mid-Atlantic Wrestling champ- uh, Tag Team Champions. They are the current World Tag Team Champions. They are a hell of a tag team. And tonight at the Charlotte Garden, which I think we're in... Yeah. Tonight at the Charlotte Garden, they get an opportunity to uh, to really step their game up. Really add that one last accomplishment that they need to really say that they're the best tag team in the world. They're already saying it, but I think they need to win tonight if, if they are to legitimately say that they are the greatest tag team in the world. Other tag teams in the tournament tonight. A, 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 a collection of superstars. We have the King of California, Fro Shore. Going to be teaming with the guy who calls himself the King of Canada, Hugh Ankry. We also have... The former two-time Mid-Atlantic heavyweight regional champion, Island Boy Apollo, finally getting to re-enter this tournament with his fr- best friend in the whole world, Kid San Juan, as the Puerto Rican boys will re- reunite for one night only to enter this tournament. And the final team in this match, straight from Coastal Zone Championship Wrestling, Dead Men Walking, Mobster, and... And... The other one, Gravedigger. <laughs> Gravedigger, there you go. Uh, yes, the Gravedigger is back in Mid-Atlantic Wrestling, but it is a different Gravedigger. So, the bracket looks something like this. Dead Man Walking, Fro Sure and Hugh Ankery, the Dynamite Express, the team of Sid Collier, and uh, Cameron Jones, and the Puerto Rican boys, Island Boy Apollo, and Kid Sam Juan. So, without further ado, let's get into the show tonight. All the teams have something to prove what will happen uh, let's find out as we open the show up with our first round match between Frosure, Hugh Ankry, and the Puerto Rican boys, Island by Apollo and Kid San Juan. In a decent match, the Puerto Rican boys do defeat Fro and Hugh when Kid San Juan defeated Hugh by pinfall with a welcome to the island. Their tag team maneuver. Good stuff from everyone involved as we open up the show with Hugh, with Frosure, the, the charismatic brawler from California who is willing to use his pace, his athleticism, you know, representing Coastal Zone tonight. Uh, former champion in Grim Socal Wrestling. He's, uh, he uses that charismatic, brawling style, those punches. You know, he, he starts off the match with Island by Apollo, and those two, they're so similar in character. They're so similar in, in, in kind of attitude. They both look like they've got a chip on their shoulder, like they've got something to prove. They're fighters. They've been fighting their entire life, and tonight they get to prove that one of them is the best, and they get in there, and they throw punches, and they throw elbows, and they throw chops, and they both just have this high-energy, active... Um, style. Hugh Ankery, that, that more uh, down-to-earth, maybe grappler kind. He spent a lot of time in North of the Border Pro Wrestling. He's left there now, but he spent a lot of time working with guys like Johnny Bloodstone, working with guys like Sean McFly, these really, really, really competent grapplers. And he's in there, and he works the same kind of style, the fast, fluid grappling that you can expect from North of the Border Pro Wrestling alum. When, meanwhile, we've got Kid San Juan, who who you know is similar in in way in a way to Fro Shore and Island by Apollo in that he is a fighter. He's had to fight his entire life, but he is he's also this high flying risk taker. You know he was part of a project with him and three other friends. They were in a backyard wrestling fed, and they had a bet to see who could get signed first. And he was the guy. He was the guy that the real feds, the real companies took a look at and said, you know what, he's got the skill, he's got the talent. He might be a guy who puts it all on the line. He might be a risk taker, but he's got the talent to go all the way. And tonight he shows it, you know, he he does does those death-defying maneuvers against guys like Hugh and Fro, just catches them off their guard, wrestles at his breakneck pace, doesn't let guys like Fro and Hugh slow the pace, not really Fro, but Hugh slow the pace down, doesn't let Fro dominate the match, you know, Fro's a bigger guy, he's like 240, 250, he can dominate guys like Kid San Juan in other promotions, but Kid San Juan will not be dominated in a match like this, Kid San Juan is going to keep up his pace, is going to keep up that fast pace attitude, and in the end, the Island Boys, Puerto Rican, uh, the Puerto Rican Boys, pick up the victory, and they get points on the board. 
as we move on to this next match. And I feel like I've actually made a mistake. Let me uh, show you guys the, the bracket <laughs> from the uh, Ripcord Invitational to see if I've made a mistake here with one of the pictures. Because if I have, then it's going to be a bit of a problem. And I may not be able to show you guys the table like I usually do. Uh, maybe I haven't, you know. It's, I have faith in myself. But... No, no. Oh, oh cool. I haven't made a mistake. Sorry, I, I, I've i been doing that a lot this year where I've been showing you guys the bracket and looking at stuff. I don't know what it is. I just feel like I, I've been making a lot more mistakes this year. Um, but I, I, on all occasions when I've done this, I haven't actually made the mistake. So, again, apologies for holding up the episode. As we move into the Dynamite Express versus Dead Men Walking. And Dynamite Express, they try their heel shit. They try to work down Grave Digger in the corner. They try to work him down. They try to grind him out. They try to get these quick tags. They try to isolate Grave Digger in their corner, make sure that it's uh, it's it's all the Dynamite Express. But uh, these guys, these these dead men walking, they have this breakneck devil may care attitude, very similar to our current Mid Atlantic Regional Tag Team Champions. They'll just put their bodies on the line. It's fast paced stuff. They'll throw themselves across the ring at all costs. They will do anything to win this tournament. And in the end, it just sets the Dynamite Express off. They are the guys who come in with these fancy clothes, with the expensive watches, you know. They're the guys who don't like to touch the fans, who don't like to sign things, who don't show up to the building two hours early and put up the ring. They're the guys living the high lives. They've got their own private jets, they claim. They've got this the penthouse apartments in New York. They've got a holiday home in Japan. You know, They've got all these big perks of being the World Tag Team Champions. And they show up expecting things to be easy. And when guys like Dead Men Walking, they start the match and they just take it to the World's Tag Team Champions. They don't sit there and let the match unfold. They just take it to them. It really throws the tag champs off. And that's what happened here tonight. The tag champs got thrown off their game. They got frustrated. They got cut to the chase. And they got... De- and they got, Yeah, they got frustrated. They couldn't work their game plan. And in the end, it just got to them. And they ended up getting defeated. Which leaves the bracket at the end of round one looking like this. Puerto Rican boys and dead men walking have points on the board. Hugh Ankery, for sure, and the Dynamite Express. Nil pois. Zero points. No points at all uh, going into the second round. But of course, you can't tell much from the first round scores as we head into our first break. We head to the interview area where for sure and Hugh Ankery are looking at sweet Tabitha. And, they, and she asks what uh, whether they think they can bounce back after their first round defeat. And Hugh Ankery says, I'm the king of canada i've worked in north of the border pro wrestling i've worked in canadian golden combat i've worked in all of those canadian feds even our own 4c and i got to see some of the best that this this world had to offer and you don't you don't come out of that experience without heart you don't come out of that experience with a few losses on your record but you know one loss doesn't define you one one loss doesn't uh, doesn't define your entire tournament and we'll keep fighting because we are kings and kings never die. Right, Fro? And Fro just looks him up and down and says, Bro. And they walk off. Actually, they might not walk off. Their match might be next. No, it's not next. No. Next up, we have the Dynamite Express taking on the Puerto Rican boys. And in a 50D+, plus, the Puerto Rican boys defeat the Dynamite Express when Kid San Juan defeated Sid Collier with a fast roll-up. This one's a little different. Obviously, Island by Apollo. Fast, energetic, almost electrifying brawler. He came here... Two years ago, and ever since, you know, everybody has, uh, I think, is pretty unanimously in agreement that he is a fantastic professional wrestler, and he's got that high energy. He's got the high action. He'll come at you. And just like the first match, the first round, the Dynamite Express are caught off guard by the high energy, high octane action of Island Boy Apollo. And he comes out there, and he starts with that brawling and that brawling and brawling. But this time, the Dynamite Express are prepared. This time, they are ready. And they slow the match down. They try and isolate Island Boy Apollo. But that doesn't quite work. Because Island Boy Apollo's got that heart and that spirit. You know, a couple of years ago, these two actually had a match. I believe it was... I think it was these two. Um, Sorry, it was Dynamite Express and Island Boy Apollo with Clark Alexander. um, Instead of Kid San Juan. Uh, And they had a match where Island Boy Apollo just would not stay down. He would not... He would refuse... To lose, and that ended up going to a draw. And Dynamite Express know this, and they get des- more, de- more and more desperate. They start trying to, you know, go to the top rope, maybe hit an elbow drop. They just hit these vicious moves, maybe trying to catch 
And then by Apollo off guard, they're trying to distract the referee, trying to hit him with a chair, he's trying to set up a table of chairs, as we've seen them do. They're just getting desperate and desperate and desperate. And it leaves those openings. And one of those openings, Kin, Kid San Juan takes, gets tagged in, big, big hot tag, and ends up rolling Sid Collier up um, out of almost nowhere. And of course, mathematically, because the Puerto Rican boys are on four points and, the, and Dynamite Express are on zero... Diamond, Dynamite Express, the World Tag Team Champions, are out of the tournament. The guys who are at the top of the territorial ladder right now, who came in here to just wrap up one tournament, get one more feather in their cap, two rounds in, they're out. Mathematically eliminated. And Sid Collier, the guy who just got pinned, is seething. He is angry. He is frustrated. And he... The red mist has descended. There is no reasoning with him right now. And he stands up and he just starts beating the ever-loving shit out of Kid San Juan. First of all, he just kicks him. Like, he kicks him so that Kid San Juan uh, falls down onto, like, his, uh, L- like, he's on his, fo- well, basically, he's on all fours. And um, then Sid just stomps as hard as he can on Kid San Juan's right arm. And it starts to bend in these most unnatural ways. And Sid Collier notices that it's starting to bend in a really unnatural way. And he just pulls at it. Just gets in and gets in some sort of arm bar and starts pulling it in that unnatural way. And he's clearly, like, the, he's broken Kid San Juan's arm here. And he starts pulling it again. And Cameron starts to try and pull Sid off of Kid San Juan. Just like, come on, Cam, this is not, this is not right. And Sid just lashes out at Cameron, just flings backwards and Cameron falls over and uh, Island by Apollo then tries to rip Sid off and and eventually Cam and Island by Apollo rip Sid Collier off of Kid San Juan, but Kid San Juan's arm is just twisted in this gnarly, unhuman kind of unnatural, really scary kind of way. Um, It is broken. There is no way Kid San Juan is going to be able to compete uh, later tonight. As we move on to Frosher, uh, Frosher and Hugh Ankery defeating Dead Men Walking when Frosher defeated Gravedigger by pinfall with a sure thing. Good stuff here. We have the energy. I mean, this is just a, a, a California style car crash. We got three guys in here in Dead Man Walking and Frosher who are very experienced in the California car crash style of professional wrestling. There is just high flying everywhere, devil may care attitude, bone crunching challenges from both guys. Um, and just brawling, nasty stuff. Hugh, Hugh Ankery is on the apron like, that looks nasty. <laughs> he's just like, he's that guy who's, who's a very purist technical wrestler, and uh, Hugh Ankery does not feel very at home in this match, but sure, for sure, sure does, and he manages to pick up the points for his team, leaving the scores like this. So, in the final matchup, Froshore and Hugh Ankery need to win against the Dynamite Express, and they need dead men walking to defeat the Puerto Rican boys to send this into tiebreaker territory. Because then at that point we'd have three teams on four points. And we wouldn't be able to settle things with the usual head-to-head rules. Uh, I don't think, anyway. Um, but if dead men walking... If, if Frosher and Hugh Ankry do not win, that leaves open dead men walking to win the tournament without a tiebreaker. Because if Frosher and Hugh Ankry don't win then Dead Men Walking can win the tournament with a victory over the Puerto Rican boys. If the Puerto Rican boys win against Dead Men Walking, no matter what happens in the first match, Puerto Rican boys are the champions. However, I mean, I'm not even going to wait for a medical update here. Kid San Juan is not wrestling tonight. <laughs> so, you got to believe Puerto Rican boys are either going to forfeit the tournament, or they're d- going to lose if, if Island Boy Apollo tries to go out there and fight. As we about head to the next break, and Island Boy Apollo storms out to the interviewer and he says, You know what? You know what? This isn't even about a tournament. This isn't about a championship. I mean, I could come out here and I could make a speech. I could make a speech about how, how tonight the odds are stacked against me again. I could make a speech about how I'm being told that I can't win if I go out there and fight. I, I could make that kind of speech. I've made that kind of speech before, but quite frankly, that would be a lie, it would be disrespectful and it would be dishonest because I'm not thinking I'm not a strategist right now I'm not a wrestler right now, I'm a concerned friend but you know I've still got my pride and I know for a fact that Kid San Juan still has his, and I know for a fact that if I go to that hospital if I go to that hospital bedside right now 
with a match booked in our main event, that Kid Sam Hall will, will look at me with eyes of disrespect and discern. No, that's, that's not how I help my friend tonight. I don't go to that hospital. I don't give up. I don't disrespect him like that. No, that's, that's not what I do. I go out there. And I prove guy, to guys like Sid Collier that you can't go around bullying people to get what you want. I prove to guys like Sid Collier that you can't kill a hero that easily. I prove to my best friend Kid San Juan that all of the work he put in tonight was not for nothing. So no, we're not giving up. We're not forfeiting. And I will not go to that hospital tonight. I'm going to go out there. Because I love this company, and I love my best friend, and I will fight on his behalf, and I will go to that hospital with a trophy in my hand. Or so help me, I will die trying. Alan Boy Apollo's match is after this one. The Nightmare Express with their final match in the tournament draw with Frosher and Hugh Ankry, leaving the main event of the evening for the championships themselves. Alan Boy Apollo and Kid Son Juan, who's not going to be there. Versus Dead Men Walking. And of course, Frosher and Hugh Ankry put in a spirited performance. They were losing this match for sure. Um, this was a this was a traditional dynamite. Actually, no, no, never, never mind. No, it wasn't actually. I remember what I was planning for this match. Sid Collier is on the apron not giving a shit for this match. Whenever uh, Cameron Jones tries to tag in, Sid just like drops off the apron. Like, not in a I'm going to walk away way, but just like, I'm not ready for the tag. I'm just going to chill. And they seem to be bickering pretty much all match. But Cameron still got Hugh isolated. He still got Hugh very much isolated on his side of the ring. And if the Dynamo Express were in full swing, if they were working as a tag team, they would have finished the match. They would have been perfectly isolated. It would have been a perfect victory for the Dynamo Express. But that's not what happened. What happened was Cam- uh, Sid Collier didn't give a shit. His mind was elsewhere. And just didn't really... I mean, they've got nothing to play for anymore. They can't win the tournament. Um, but they they grind out a draw against uh, Frosher and Hugh Ankry. And uh, that means the main event is all for play for. As uh, Island Boy Apollo comes out for the main event to take on, of course, Dead Man Walking, Kid San Juan is nowhere to be found. And, uh, oh, nice, cool. And in the main event of the evening, you know, he fights valiantly. And Dead Man Walking, they try to use those bone-crunching moves. They try to use those vicious, just risk-taking maneuvers to just destroy Alan by Apollo. They got him 2-1. They've got him isolated in the middle of the ring. But Alan by Apollo, this isn't a wrestler just fighting for pride or for a trophy. This isn't a wrestler just, just trying to, to fight against uh, someone he dislikes. This is a guy who just saw his best friend get mangled. Not injured. Not attacked. Mangled. His best friend in the whole wide world. The guy who was... You know how intimate wrestlers on the road are? That's a very intimate relationship, and I'm not trying to say it's like a romantic relationship, but it's a very intimate relationship. You spend a, a huge percentage of your time uh, on the road with these guys talking and, and supporting each other. That is a very intimate relationship, and he just saw that guy, the guy who has supported him through a very difficult 10, 20 years of his wrestling career, or 10 years-ish of his wrestling career, not just get injured, not just get victimized, he got mangled. He got treated like no human being should treat. And he's out there with a passion, with a vengeance. And just because there are two guys who are very, very good and are very, very willing to cut corners, take advantage, isolate, and viciously destroy, he will not be victimized. He will not be mangled. He will fight till his last breath. And you know how much heart Island by Apollo has. He has shown it week in, week out since he got to this company. If You know what? Sometimes he's not the cleverest guy around. Sometimes he's not the strongest. He's fought guys like Scythe. He's fought guys like Giant Brody, guys who are stronger. He's not always the fastest. You know, he's got guys like Kama, uh, Kamikaze, who is sadly no longer here in the company. But he fought him. And that was a fast guy. And he's not always the fastest. And, you know, he went into there with his match with Scythe probably earlier than he should have. He's not always the smartest. But if there is one thing that defines Island Boy Apollo, it is his heart. And no matter what odds are up against him, and no matter what difficulties he struggles against, he will never give up. And you know what? Sometimes, if you fight hard enough, it works. And tonight, Island Boy Apollo is able to overcome 
This is the most motivated this man has ever been and motivation is what drives him. And in front of a thousand people at the Charlotte Garden, he just sucks that atmosphere and uses it and overcomes. And he defeats Dead Men Walking in 50 minutes and 44 seconds in a 62C. And he's won. He, get, he does get to go back to that hospital bed later tonight with a trophy. He does get, you know, he doesn't lift the trophy. You know, he gets on the mic and he says, thank you all for supporting me through this. I'm not going to waste too much of your time. I'm not going to be wasting too much of mine. But just know, Sid Collier, hell, Cameron Jones, this is not over. But I'm going to go now. I'm going to bring this back to the guy who earned it. The guy who did all the heavy lifting and the guy who would have been here to lift it if it wasn't for that monster. So thank you all for coming. I hope you have a safe travel home. And I, I will I will see you guys again. And Sid Collier, you'll be damn sure I'll see you again. And he walks off with the two trophies. And he has won the Sam Keith Classic, but it is a oh jeez. But it is a bittersweet ending. Huh. Well I hope you guys enjoyed. I actually enjoyed that. I was worried about tonight. Because this took a while to book, just because the Sam Keith Classic every year has more graphics. Can you believe... Oh, let me show you the final uh, table. <laughs> Can you believe that these graphics, by the way, actually are the most graphically intensive work I have to do in the series all year? <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so it means it takes like a, like a good couple hours of work to get this done every year. And obviously, not only that, once, I can't, once I've actually got the ideas in my head doesn't take that long, but I've got to book it all, and I've got to get all the teams in, I've got to be like, alright, well, I've used these guys before, um, so I don't want to reuse teams, and I've got to get guys that can job here, and I want to tell certain stories, so I've got to get these specific guys, and maybe I want to push this guy, and, you know, it's, uh, it's a difficult show to book every year. But usually, when I come to book the show, I'm like, oh, I've done it. I've created something amazing, and I'm ready to talk to you guys about it. Well, today I came to the end, and I was like, I really like this idea, but I'm just not grasping it in my head. I don't really know how it's going to play out. I really hope that it kind of works when I when I talk about it. Um, yeah, I really hope it, kind of, it works when I come to talk about it. And I, w I know, my head was in a lot of places tonight, and I was thinking, maybe I should just hold off till tomorrow. I've already lost grasp of a few of the characters. Maybe I should rewatch a few of the most recent episodes. Um, but I was like, no, I don't want to miss today. I want to record an episode today because I'm uploading an episode today. And it was just, it was a lot of things making me, like, iffy about tonight's show. But I think it turned out quite well. And I hope you agree. Let me know in the comments if you particularly enjoyed the episode and are feeling especially generous. There's a link to my Patreon in the description. If you want to hear my rambling or want to have a creative input in the series, a uh, link to my Twitter is in the description. And uh, aside from that, next episode is The Battle of the Mid-Atlantic. I'm going to cough a second. <laughs> so wait a minute. The Battle of the Mid-Atlantic, or as someone pointed out in the comments recently, The Battle for the Mid-Atlantic, as it says on the picture. We'll talk more about that next time because that's an interesting topic. That goes back to my Mid Atlantic Wrestling 2013 series. Um, oh jeez, my <laughs> my rib feels a little weird. I'm hoping that's nothing to to worry about. Um, I, I tend to injure myself really weirdly in this in these MAW videos. Anyway, I have an announcement to make. I'm not quite sure how what form this is going to take exactly yet, but whatever the card shapes up to be for the Battle of the Mid Atlantic, we are going to have a very very special main event. I'm thinking it's going to be something like uh, four singles matches and then a tag match uh, that happens at next next month's show. Uh, the winner of every match on that card, this is not going to be a big tournament thing, it's going to be a normal card for the most part, except the main event is going to be a little special. It's going to be a normal card, but every single winner of those matches, those normally booked matches, are going to go on to the main event, which will be a six-man uh, elimination match compri comprising the winners from the rest of the normal card uh, the, and we're going to make sure that the uh, the Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion is not booked on the next show because we are going to, like I said, all of the winners of next, mo uh, next month's show is going to go on to the main event, which will be a six-man elimination match, and the winner of that six-man elimination match is going to be the number one contender for where it all begins again as usual, I fucked up explaining the rules to something, but I hope you get it, and if not, tune in next time, because I'll explain the rules again, and you probably won't get them then either, but then you can watch the show, and maybe you'll understand the rules when I do it. So yeah, um, that's even more reason to tune in next time. I hope you do. If you do, it would be an honor, and I, I will see you guys then if you do, and uh, 
Have a good day, guys. Peace out.